take a moment to thank the Humanist Association of the Greater Sacramento Area for being a bronze sponsor today. Thank you. Yay! We have a community panel. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsors at the highest levels today. They are Applied Office on-site computer training, Paul Story. There's Paul on the camera. Wave, Paul. There he goes. The Original Motto Project, Reason Center, Humanist Association of the Greater Sacramento Area, No More in God We Trust. And now, the President of California Free Thought Day Committee would like to introduce a few very special organizations that we can all help. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome once again, David Diskin. All right, before we do that, if you'll indulge me, uh, about uh, 20 minutes ago, I was handing out some of those secular pride signs. You guys have those? Here's what I want. I want you to hold them real high, real tall, and look at that camera guy back there. There we go. Hold them still, because it's just a picture, people. It's not video. Hold them still. There we go. Get some shots in there. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much. Please remember to be tweeting and sharing that hashtag. All right. Um, like I was saying uh, just after Sydney finished, we at Free Thought Day absolutely love to recognize those who are part of growing this community and making others, making a difference in others' lives. And, you know, we hear time and time again that if you are uh, religious or, or uh, go to church or something, that is somehow proof that you are a moral person and that the opposite of that implies that if you're not one of those people that you have no sense or source of morality and that you can't be somebody who contributes positively to society. Is that in any way correct? No, not at all. And to prove that, I am really proud uh, to introduce a number of organizations who are going to come out here and talk to you about their national and statewide organizations. And so please, let's welcome out. Um, let's, uh, Marie, can you open up that door and start, start ushering them out here? Um, we're going to bring out here from Camp Quest West, Nick Gray, and from the Secular Student Alliance, Don Button, from Grief Beyond Belief, Rebecca Hensler, from the Secular Coalition for California, Tom Manger, from the United Coalition of Reason, Melissa Pugh, and from the Satanic Temple, Lucian Graves, and from the Foundation, <laughs> Graves, and from the Foundation Beyond Belief, let's welcome Robert, uh, Connor Robinson. I'm going to hand the mic. We'll start off with Connor, and they're going to uh, introduce themselves to you, and uh, we'll see how much time we have left for questions. And when we are done, I encourage you to meet with these people and visit their websites and support them in any way you can, because these people and their organizations are the one that is putting the positive face on our movement. Thank you, guys. I'll leave it to you. All right, so uh, Foundation Beyond Belief helps humanists, atheists, and other non-believers, or really anyone who wants to, put their values into action uh, through <clears throat> um, effective charity and effective volunteering with secular causes. So there are a number of different programs at Foundation Beyond Belief. I supervise the international volunteering program called the Humanist Service Corps. We also have Humanist Disaster Recovery. We're currently uh, running a drive for Hurricane Matthew, and there's already been a uh, wonderful secular charity selected for those funds. That's one way that you can support what we're doing. Um, and then there's, of course, the foundational program of Foundation Beyond Belief, which is the charitable giving program. And that's where our members uh, pool monthly donations. And 100% of those funds go to effective, innovative, secular nonprofits around the world in education, human rights, uh, the natural world, and um, poverty and health. Um, that's pretty much it. Basically just effective, secular, uh, volunteering, and charity. Hi. I'm with the Satanic Temple. Uh, as she mentioned, we've distributed workbooks in schools where they've opened up uh, an open forum for religious expression, and we found that when they say they've opened up an open forum for religious expression, they're not usually uh, anticipating that Satanists will become involved. <laughs> One of our most popular campaigns was our, is our attempt to put a Satanic monument alongside Ten Commandments monument. First in Oklahoma, Oklahoma took down their Ten Commandments. 
Uh, I recently had a subcommittee hearing in Arkansas where we're trying to uh, fight to erect the Baphomet alongside the Ten Commandments there. Uh, but I was quite clear with Arkansas that in all likelihood their Ten Commandments monument will come down and it will come down at taxpayer cost. Um, most recently we've been working to put after school clubs into schools that have the good news clubs. And our after school clubs contain no items of religious opinion and are based on critical thinking and, and rational processes and education. But it's bad enough to the uh, religious factions that it's a after school club that happens to be carried out, executed by the Satanic Temple. So that is causing a, a nationwide, even international dialogue now about the Good News Clubs that a lot of people didn't realize was problematic. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Melissa Pugh. I am the uh, United Coalition of Reason Grassroots and um, Outreach Coordinator. And us um, at United Core, our goal is to take local atheist groups and we try to get everyone collating in a group together to do more with their communities. So a big thing we did about five years ago is we had our big billboard campaign where we put up huge billboards in tons of cities all over California. And it, you know our, our slogan was good without God. So it got a lot of uh, publicity, a lot of people were a lot of people were really, really, really great about it. And then in Chicago, you know, somebody has to vandalize it. So, um, but those, that's the type of things we do for um, our local groups. Um, I, myself, as the grassroots outreach person, I'm the person that is um, doing most of the outreach. I'm the one that's talking to the local groups. I'm the one that uh, travels and um, gets ideas from local groups and what you guys need. So please email me, mpu at unitedcore.org, if you would like to get your group into our coalition. We don't charge any fees or anything like that. Um, we, really we really love to help the local groups, and um, it's very important to me. I'm a huge fan of grassroots work, and we cannot do this without grassroots work. So I, hope every I think everybody knows that by now. But uh, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Tom Manger with Secular Coalition for California. We are a state chapter of the National Secular Coalition for America. Uh, our focus is Sacramento. We keep an eye on legislation as it's introduced. Any changes to it, we pick legislation of a sectarian nature and we'll oppose it. If there's uh, secular legislation that's of interest to us will support it. We write position papers, we give testimony at committee hearings, and uh, twice a year we actually go and visit every single legislative office in Sacramento, all the senators and the assembly members. Uh, tomorrow we are going, is one of our, the days we'll be there, uh, we'll be presenting a scorecard where we took 11 of the bills that were of interest to us. We rated um, each of the legislators, and we'll actually go in there and hold them accountable. So uh, we have a number of people joining us tomorrow. Anybody else want to join us? Come see me at the table. Hi, my name is Rebecca Hensler. I'm the founder of Grief Beyond Belief. Grief Beyond Belief provides a variety of, at this point, mostly online venues for peer-to-peer -peer secular grief support entirely free of religion and spiritualism. Grief Beyond Belief started in 2011 as a Facebook page. Um, the page currently still provides peer-to-peer -peer grief support as well as a resource for anyone who's interested in providing grief support, appropriate grief support for people who are grieving without belief in any kind of God or afterlife. We've expanded to a closed Facebook group that has uh, well over 3,000 members, a uh, 
website that has a link library of almost 350 links to writing, videos, audio about grief that has no religion or spiritualism in it. It's often hard to find writing about grief that is entirely free of religion. My current project, I just finished writing the Secular Grief Support Handbook. It provides guidance for community organizers or members of any kind of secular group or even individuals in how to provide secular grief support in their community. So if you are interested in that project and helping bring secular grief support IRL into the real world, um, please, please come talk to me. I'm going to go be in that back corner over there and I will happily take your contact information so we can connect and I can support you in that. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Don Button. I am the faculty advisor for the Secular Student Alliance uh, Student Club at Sacramento City College. Um, but I'm going to speak about the whole national organization of the SSA, which you can find at secularstudents.org. They're out of Ohio. They've been uh, around for about 16 years. And they have 273 affiliates at colleges and high schools around the country. Um, they're not all called Secular Student Alliance. They have other names as well, but they're all affiliated. Um, there are about 30 high schools, and that, there are 30 or 40 high schools, that, and that's growing because it's difficult, as you heard their story, to get uh, uh, secular organizations or atheist clubs at high schools. It's much harder than colleges. Um, there's actually two, there are six in, in California. There are high school groups, one of which is here, Laguna Creek. Um, the, uh, and um, from Elk Grove, and the other is West Campus here in Sacramento. And there are four college organizations here in the Sacramento area, Davis, Sacramento State, um, Sierra College and ours at Sacramento City College. So we bring students together to, to so they can um, share in their secular values, um, try to promote secular values and critical thinking. Um, it, when we started at Sacramento City College eight years ago, there were three very active Christian clubs, and now there seems to be only one sort of active club. I don't, I, we can't take credit for that, but hopefully. <laughs> Or maybe we can, I don't know. But um, it's a trend, I hope. I hope to see it's a trend that we're growing. The college uh, age population in the atheist community is one of the largest um, non-religious um, demographics. And it's growing. About 25% of college age people in the United States are non, uh, non, not necessarily atheists. They don't claim we talked about that earlier, but you know, they are non-religious. And so we're hoping to make that more, give people an outlet in college and high school. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Nick Gray. I'm on the uh, programming team for Camp Quest West. We are an affiliate of the larger Camp Quest uh, organization throughout the United States. And uh, Camp Quest is uh, simply your classic uh, sleep over week long summer camp experience. Um, we're not really recreating the wheel. We, uh, we do what any other summer camp would do. Kids do crafts and canoeing and archery and swimming and all of those things. Um, the only exception would be that we don't carve out time for uh, religious activities. Instead, we teach things like critical thought, uh, compared to religion, philosophy, uh, science, and um, provide a community for free thinkers and their families, their children, um, when uh, in, in many communities that's uh, lacking for those kids. So uh, in, here in California, we have uh, two actual locations, Camp Quest uh, West NorCal, which is uh, in the mountains above uh, Nevada City. We've expanded to two sessions uh, because of the demand um, from, from kids for our camp. And then we also have a, um, a session in, in Wrightwood, California, SoCal, um, up in the mountains of, above Riverside. So that's us. Thank you guys so much. So before you sit down, I think we've got a little bit of time left for questions. I'm going to have Marie give us the, uh, the good old cutoff sign in a few minutes when we're ready to move on. Um, but if you have questions for these organizations, come line up behind me here. We can take a couple of them. And I've got the first one. This is going to be for all of you, sort of a rapid fire question. We'll just pass the mic on this way. Um, you've got, I don't know, 200-ish people here today. Um, what is the one very easy, quickest thing they can do for your organization today right here before they leave uh, Free Thought Day? Money. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you can donate today, uh, today on site. You can go to our website, campquest.org, and donate uh, to the national organization or to campquestwest.org West, camp and uh, donate locally. Volunteering, we are an entirely volunteer organization. Um, other than a few higher-ups in the national organization, every camp is entirely staffed, entirely organized, entirely run by volunteers. So if... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> so, uh, so volunteer your time, volunteer your money, uh, and volunteer your talents. So um, we need volunteers not just on site during the weeks of camp themselves, but behind the scenes all year round, getting programming ready, getting things um, organized. Uh, money? No. Um, you can uh, you can actually you can actually go to the second the national organization secularstudents.org. You can donate. It's not not it's tax deductible, and uh, but you can also um, we don't have a website. I don't think you guys do either. But we have Facebook groups. You can look up Sac City uh, Secular Student Alliance and find us. Join our page and follow us. We bring events every year. We bring guest speakers. We brought PZ Myers, Greta, Christina, Dan Barker twice. A bunch of different people over the years. We try to have one or two speakers every year. So find our you know. Keep an eye out for our events. We always advertise them on SACFAN and the meetup group. So come to our events and see and you know support us that way and spread the word. Thanks. More than anything else, grief support involves other human beings um, communicating and offering comfort. That's something we can all do. It doesn't cost anything at all. And Every one of us can do it without throwing in mythology and mysticism. And you are the people who can do that. So if you go to Facebook and search on Grief Beyond Belief and like the public Facebook page, and then when you see a post in your um, news feed that says, here is someone looking for support, say something kind and comforting. Um, also, money. I'm about, <laughs> um, I'm about to launch a Indiegogo for the Secular Grief Support Handbook. It's something I really did because I think the community needs it. But if you're interested in donating to that, um, please come give me your contact information so that I can reach out for support. Thank you. I'll, I'll say money again. <laughs> but we're, we are 501c4, so we're not deductible. Um, so the one thing you guys should do is vote, help and get out the vote efforts around you, get all of your secular friends to vote. Right here, everybody in red, these are listed as assembly members, these are people we want out of office. So, um, and another thing you guys could do is show up for our lobby days. Dave is holding up our sign. Twice a year we visit every single legislative office. They know we're out there. They know our numbers are growing. The trick is we have to get organized. And this group here is, this is the one that's going to make it happen. And when is that, Tom? So we have Lobby Day tomorrow. We'll be at the State House at, is it 8.30 or 9? 8.30. 8.30. Room 127, the old building. For United Corps, the most important thing that we need from you all is you all. We have to have atheist activists out there. And we have to be in groups where we can function together to make our community more seen better and also um, heard in uh, this you know, Donald, Donald Trump era. So <laughs> that's what we want from you guys. We want your activism. Get involved with your local groups. That's what we need. Thank you. We're a young and fast-growing organization, so if you have any talents or advice, feel free to email us uh, to help organize and volunteer whatever you can. But uh, we are donation-based, and a lot of the money we get is made from merchandise sales, uh, shopsatan.com, so you can get <laughs> Satan swag and, and help fund some of our campaigns. And also, if we're ever in an area you are in and we're fighting for equal representation to the religious groups where you're at, where they've been invited into uh, open forums, particularly city council meetings where they open up with a Christian invocation and we've asked to give a satanic one, it helps actually if you write letters to the local officials and let them know that you stand up for the First Amendment 
and what it means for the government to engage in viewpoint neutrality, that it's not their place to act as arbiter of what is appropriate religious or political expression in the open forum. Thank you. Uh, David Diskin has asked me to interrupt and just do the next question. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to leave you out. <laughs> um, so about like two years ago, you could show up to a local event and there'd be about 150 people there. Uh, now, you personally. Um, now, we have an event and 30 people show up. What, what can we do? Uh, what's your best advice to everybody to get people more involved? Because it seems like people are dropping off and I think it's younger people are just less engaged. They're already not religious. How do we pull them in? How are we going to continue a vibrant movement if we bring in great speakers and half the audience is now showing up? I think you shouldn't try to be everything for everybody. And I think everybody, we get a lot of advice all the time up to and including wouldn't you be better off if you didn't use the word Satan? And I say, no, and we should really, you should do what you think is right and what feels right to you and look at the goals you want to achieve and go for them stridently and without compromise. Um, it, as far as that kind of outside advice is concerned, we have a very kind of democratic system within the Satanic Temple where we do talk with the people who identify with us, but this idea of of assimilating everybody into what we're doing or our belief system, we're, we're, not, we're not interested in that. And in fact, that's the whole problem, I think, with, with, uh, with the other religious movements. We wouldn't have a problem with, with uh, Christians if it weren't for theocrats trying to impose their beliefs on the rest of us. They're, they're free to believe what they want to believe. Uh, they're free to open the forum, and then we'll see how tenable that is when everybody else wants to jump on board. But as for drawing more people in, I, I really think I think it's a mistake to start thinking in those terms. I think it's a mistake to start thinking in quantity over quality. And I think once you really build that quality, once you really build value in what you're doing, that crowd will come. We, put, we took that gamble in the beginning with the Satanic Temple. At the beginning, we were kind of pretending we were a movement, but we were gambling on the idea that there was uh, this huge body of people for whom this would resonate. And that turned out to be true. And more and more as we go on, we, we collect those people and they, they understand what we're doing. That might not be helpful advice, but, <laughs> but that's our game plan anyway. Um, for my answer, I'm going to take my Camp Quest hat off um, because I'm also a community organizer. Um, for many years, I was the lead organizer and board chair for Free Thought Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. And um, we struggled with that same issue. Um, when, I, when I came on board and, and started getting involved, we struggled with how do we get more people to turn out? How do we get all these people who seem to be interested online into actually coming to, to events and, and getting involved? Um, and one thing that, and we were, we've been very successful, I say we, I, I haven't lived in Ohio for a couple of years, but I, I keep an eye on them, they're doing well. Um, one of the things that we, we decided we were going to do is shift our focus from being a community for, our, a free thought community to being a community for free thinkers, with the emphasis on community first. Um, I think, from my perspective and from my experience, um, if you spend more time as an organization, as a, especially a grassroots local or organization, if you spend more time focusing on taking care of people's human and addressing people's human needs, human services first, then the, then the free thought and the atheism and the humanism and all that stuff will come along with it. Um, if, if, you know, when we started organizing events that did not have anything explicitly to do with religion, we started to do things that, um, where we were not kind of defining ourselves as non-religious, just we're human beings, this is let's get together and do something, and if religious conversation comes up, fine. That's when we really started to grow. When people saw that there was a value to our organization, to our community beyond um, the activism portion. That there, it's not to say that that's not important, but it's insufficient by itself. So, um, and then also I would say one last thing, you have to be ready to do boring, hard, often unappreciated work. You need organizers at the local level who are willing to go out and, and do, do, the, um, do the hard work, do the, the, un, un, the thankless work uh, many times to make this happen. 
um, because it, it won't it won't happen uh, without it. So my question is for the Secular Student Alliance. And before I get to you, I just want to give huge props to the high school chapter. That's so awesome. I tried to start with you. I tried to start one, they wouldn't let me, so I started Young Democrats Club instead. So go you guys, that's awesome. You're super brave, I love it. Um, so my question is, like in general, what's in your time in organizing, what's like the biggest or like worst backlash you've seen? Um, we've been fortunate at City College to not have much backlash. We've never had any pushback from administration. Um, we, I, I, but I do have two quick stories. One is one of our members who's sitting over there, Morgan, transferred over to City College because she was going to our, I hope you don't mind telling your story, she was going to our sister college, Consumnus River College, and trying to start up a club there and not getting any help. Um, she did have a faculty member who was trying to, but a little hands off, and the administration was actually not, members of the administration were pushing back a little bit, and I think you spent about a year trying to get it going, and maybe also not generating a lot of attention from students. I don't know. So she came to us. She moved, transferred over to us, and now she's our member, and that's fine. So there, you know, that was one issue. Sorry, we um, the kind of the most interesting one is that we had three years ago. We worked with three other clubs: sociology club, um, LGBT, the, uh, or excuse me. QSA, Queer Straight Alliance, and the uh, Feminist Club to put together a week, a four day long event called Sex Positive Week. So we were pushing, we were breaking sort of the boundaries of what a normal SSA would do because we were working with other clubs and we just happened that year to have an or, uh, the large majority of the students in our club were LGBT. So there was a, a kind of a movement to say, let's address sex education at the college level and everything. And that got a little pushback because that was pretty progressive to try to kind of uh, bring in. We brought in Lacey Green and uh, wow. Daryl Ray, who uh, is part of the SSA, and several other speakers, uh, including uh, Janet Hardy, who is well known in that community. So we had a lot of great speakers for four days of events. Uh, it was very ambitious. But we got some faculty members who were really angry that we were, <laughs> we were pushing sex education, even at the college level, you know, because <laughs> um, we had seminars on everything, you know, we really opened it up and had really interesting stuff. So going beyond, beyond just talking about religion and let's talk about how religion or other things are at least tied into how that uh, affects people's views on LGBT issues or sexuality or all of that, I think was really a great thing we did. In fact, we got an award from the National Organization for doing it. <laughs> and we actually pushed to get, um, it actually turned into an activist event where um, some of our students pushed farther to get the administration to agree to say that all new buildings would have uh, uh, gender neutral restrooms Aww. in the planning. So that was an outgrowth of So that was really great. Uh, but we did get some pushback from faculty who thought we were going too far with bringing up these issues about sex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One more time, a round of applause for the entire panel, please. I'm going to hand the mic back to our MC, Marie, but before I do that, I want to encourage all of you to take the example set forth by Uncle Sam, and as soon as you get the next opportunity, walk up to these guys, open up your wallets, give them whatever you have inside, credit cards, cash, business cards, lint, whatever. Support these organizations, am I right? Thank you guys, thank you so much. All righty, and thank you, David. How about a round of applause for Camp Quest West, providing fun and activities for the children here today.